trashy pulp novels of the world have anything to offer? Are bestsellers all they're hyped up to be? The Terrible Book Club explores whether or not you really can judge a book by its cover or its ridiculous synopsis. If you've ever seen a book and thought, ugh, who's reading this? We probably are. Welcome to episode 27 of the Terrible Book Club. I'm Chris, and this is Paris. Hello! And this time we read Dragon Prince by Melanie Ron. <laughs> wow, you really, uh, really made that title exciting, Chris. <laughs> Dragon Prince. I don't know, it sounds pretty... It's an epic scale in scale. It's a fantasy book. It's one of these again. Yeah, yeah. so many fantasy things. Well... It's, 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 uh, well, actually, we should talk about why we did this book. So we read this book for episode 27 because our lovely patron, Dari, recommended it. Um, she chose this book to be read by us, so that's how yes, we ended this, up with it. Um, our first patron request. Yeah. So it, special. <laughs> wow. It is. That sounds sarcastic, but it is special. I yeah, no, it, it really is. So thanks, Dari, um, for your patronage, and I hope you enjoy the episode about the Dragon Prince. So... Uh, it's a 574-page uh, mass-market paperback fantasy novel, so pretty lengthy. Um, it's kind of your standard swords and sorcery and sprinkle of dragons. <laughs> you know, it's not like yeah, it's not mind-blowingly like, different or anything. Um, it's not like super high fantasy, I would say. It's not like it's a Forgotten Realms novel where everyone's cast in fucking magic missile and cone of cold every yeah other there's no there's no like orcs or anything or elves it's just like humans and some of them have magic powers um yeah so uh let's talk about the good things about this book first so uh for me a lot of good things it was yeah, quite for, a good read actually this yeah is one like of, this it, is probably the favorite thing i've read for a terrible book club actually really that doesn't mean it's good but it's yeah. my favorite thing. Yeah, it, it, I would it's, say it's, it's... You know, it's pretty good. It's decent. Yeah, I, it's I'm really bad. on the edge. I'm really super conflicted, honestly. <laughs> well, so the reason that it's it's not that bad is because it's very well written. Um, uh, Melanie Ron did a really, really great job with, like, descriptive phrasing. The dialogue in this book is actually really good for the most part, which is It's very surprising. readable. Um, yes. I would say, like, it's, you know, it's definitely not... Um, it's not like fucking House of Leaves or anything of that nature, but um, compared to the drivel that we're used to, the um, the dialogue in this book is very well written. Um, I think, in general, I mean, there are, there are definitely some cartoonishly evil characters that say things that are ridiculous, and some yeah, cartoonishly they're, they're, like overly good, cool guy characters that say things that are also yeah, ridiculous. Yeah, there's, there's a little bit of that, but that's I guess if that's we're fantasy talking novels, about this, right? Like, especially with a basic bitch fantasy novel like yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, this is a basic, basic bitch Becky fantasy novel. Um, so, but I will say, uh, the writing was good. Um, weirdly, more typos than usual from mass market paperbacks. Like, there were a lot of weird typos in this that I was kind of surprised by, but it didn't really take away from anything. Like, overall, the grammar, the syntax, like, all of those little things that usually drive me to kill myself while reading a terrible book uh, were not present. So, thank you, Miss Ron. Uh, that was you must good. Have killed yourself many times by now. Just uh, yeah, I should be dead. Um, okay. Well. Yeah, and so unlike a lot of the books we've read before, you know, the people in this for the most part talked like human beings. Um, style was good. It definitely made. I think Chris and I discussed this briefly. Like we both wanted to keep reading it to see what would happen, but I do think that uh, I was inevitably disappointed by how basic it was. There was um, a lot of, but it had ends. some potential. That's that didn't thing. really get tied up in a way that felt satisfying, and I didn't even really feel like they set up much for like the next book because once again, of course, this is a series. Yeah, so this is a series every... of is a series of six books. Um, technically, two series of three books each, but they all take place in the same relative, uh, like the same world and the same sure. places. So sure. it's a six book series. Um, yeah, I mean, they didn't really. They did some. Uh, foreshadowing right at the end when they have like the 
you know, the ceremonies at the end where they give land to people and whatever. But uh, sure, anyway, yeah. uh, Chris, do you want to take us through the basic plot line of this book and the main characters? Sure. So, so this is actually, like, the, in my opinion, a lot of the front half of this book, because there's a very clear split in the middle in terms of the front half and the back half of the book, it, it's almost very... I thought it was almost a romance novel d- during the first half because it talks about... Um, the Prince Rohan is in charge of his kingdom. Um, it's a sort of a desert kingdom, so there's actually like not much in terms of sheer resources that he has available to you, except for some stuff that gets brought up later. But at, at first glance, he he rules a desert kingdom. He's a prince in a part uh, amongst all these other princedoms, I guess you could say, with there being one high prince over them all. I guess no one wanted to say king for whatever Yeah, I didn't understand reason. that. I thought that was really stupid. Um, Everyone's uh, really into that Minneapolis funk sound, Paris. You know, everyone just really wants to be like prince, that's all. Oh, um, wow, I didn't any, get that anyway, joke. All right, moving on. Uh, any, um, anyway, uh, so Rohan comes into his into rulership, I guess you could say, of the kingdom because his father, Zahava, dies after a dragon killing. Excuse uh, me, ex- after a sick dragon fight. <laughs> because did, that's like all... So, yeah, this whole book is, like, at the beginning, they talk a little bit about how people just hunt the dragons mercilessly because they're oh they're big winged evil pests like they must die so they have annual dragon hunts where they kill as many babies as they can right as they hatch which is like insanely fucked up um and hey man that's when you want to get a dragon right do you want to fight uh, them yeah. when they're big <laughs> well, you're, well that, and that's what Zahava did Zahava was fighting this big old dragon right as he was like in the middle of his dragon fuck season because they they love talking about dragon sex in this book I, oh it's yeah like, it, it's there's like, a whole yeah. lot of re- allusions and references to how dragons do it and the particular like patterns <sighs> of dragon yeah. mating and i wish like luckily nothing nothing like very graphic no there's not a dragon mating scene except for maybe like a male like roaring about having come out of the cave all I don't know, cummed out or whatever. Yeah, all like, glistening he's and he's whatever. Like, oh, that was awesome. I gotta go now. I gotta go have a dragon like... cigarette, which means I blow <laughs> fire on peasants. <laughs> a dragon cigarette is just a peasant. That's the evil. <laughs> yeah. yeah the... Um, the thing, uh, this reminds me, something I did, uh, the other thing I liked about this book is I, I really liked how the author did a lot of clever foreshadowing that wasn't super in your face, which was nice. Like, all the dragon mating scenes... Or at least some of them ended up, like, in the way that they talk about the dragon mating, ended up being tied to some uh, messed up sex scenes at the end of the book. And, like, I I think that she did a pretty good job of of that. Um, There are other examples, but I can't remember them. The only thing I, something I really didn't like was that the author beat you over the head with everyone's secret plans. So you just knew all the time what everyone was doing, and there was never any mystery, which kind of sucked, which is one of those things that disappointed me a whole lot. uh, up front, I thought it was like a romance novel because uh, I don't know why you thought that. I because I don't the Prince get it. It's Rohan, a like book. the first thing they talk about is him getting married to his aunt's. Like, yeah, it's a fantasy book. There's always somebody falling in love and getting married. That's just part of that. Not in every single one, I think. But yeah, oh, yeah, for most of them, you're right. But like this one was super focused on like how Rohan should marry a uh, Shaned. I guess yeah. is how you would pronounce yeah Shaned. Um, because his aunt, Andrade, is the leader Andra- of... It's Andrade, not Andrade. It's Andrade. I, th- I would... Andrade. I th- All right, fine. I'll go with your way. I mean, if so you want to go confusing. with, like, the, tr- the Portuguese last name, Andrade. Like, it's not Andrade. <laughs> it's not Andrade. <laughs> One of them Andrades. Uh, that's yeah, how Redneck I think it's talks Andrade. about sci-fi. Um, but um, whatever. That, she's... A- yeah. Andrade... Uh, is uh, she wants Rohan to get married to one of her sun runners. She is the basically head wizard of the wizard place or witch place. Or, it's both. Yeah. yeah it's so the, the sorcerers. One, yeah, the one like magical um element in this book are, is the sun runners. They are all right. They are people who can do sun emails. Yeah, that's as far as I can tell. Sun they're emails, really good guys. At, at sun emails. Light and, emails, like, technically. Because they like, can also use casting moonlight. a small fire spell or like a small breeze or something is yeah they have some, they have some minor they have some elemental... elemental control but mostly it seems what they do is light emails <laughs> like yeah that so... seems like most of their job uh, yeah so basically a sunrunner is placed at every important keep you know important princedom castle or like lesser prince they so it's like the internet light highway but just for weird ma- mind emails um. And they like close their eyes and f- 
somehow are connected to the light beams and every individual person has a specific color and pattern in the light and that's that's it's, like their ip address like yeah, their, it's, it's, their it's light their color IP pattern address i was kind of wondering yeah. how does that if can you be one of these if you're colorblind like probably if not i can't It'd probably tell be real hard what your colors are does no. that fuck me up yeah you, like... you wouldn't be able to but like if it's like it, chris you're, you'll place... never be a sunrunner just it to deal does, with it. look it sounds like it takes place mostly <laughs> in their mind so maybe i just have to know like the particular shades of gray that this person has it doesn't necessarily have to be like i have to know the exact color i and, mean like, maybe punch in it... a simon says thing to get to <laughs> c- contact someone but it would be really difficult for you i think um but anyway so that that's like you know i i think an original creation of this world and i thought it was kind of cool even if it's sort of dorky in a way i still thought it was kind of neat um has there ever been a fantasy novel with magic that was, like, super cool? Like, they all... Uh, most fantasy novels I read, the wizards just seem to be, like, walking nukes that can just yeah. destroy things at will. And it's the same, it, you know, except... I guess, like, they're pretty low-powered in this book. Cause yeah, which just... I kind of liked. I kind of liked that all they really did was, like, the light emails. And they could, like you said, you know, they can conjure, like, a slight breeze or a, a little sound. It's almost like they had, um... What's that, uh... I have it, God, for one of my D and D characters. What is that um, cantrip in Five E? <laughs> uh, it's press like digitation. press the digitation. Yeah, so you know, able to control like my able to do like minor elemental effects. So if any of you are huge nerds like us and play D and um, D, Sunrunners have press the digitation. Ta da! Um, I've been going through a lot of my D and D stuff lately, so I, I I just had that on hand because. Mm. <laughs> Anyway, yeah. uh, so Rohan and Shaned are they they're destined to be married because first of all, Andrade said so. Rohan is kind of like a little bit um, reticent at first, but then he sees her in the fire, which is a very Game of Thronesy kind of thing. Yeah, uh, they have like so the whole thing about the like you know, Chris just said they were destined to be together, but like only kind of. I do think it's good in the book that they're like well. Even if you have these visions during these rituals, like, they can be changed. Um, Andrade is pretty clear about that, but they meet each other and it's, you know, love at first sight and all that shit, so. But they're kind of skeptical of each yeah, other. Yeah, they are at skeptical first. of each other a little bit. But I, And I, then, I, then the, the, there's this, also this whole game Rohan plays. Is he's like, okay, well, I have to go to this big tournament that's coming up in a few weeks, and I don't want anyone to know that I already chose you as my wife so I can get some of these, like, deals made. For by, the other like, princes, yeah. From the other princes by making them think I'll take one of their daughters. So you got to keep it on the down low how super into me you are or else this whole plan goes out the window. So there's a whole... A lot of, like, the first fourth of the book is them being like, oh, we really like each other, but we can't even do anything about it. I can't even look at him, or else people will know right away. Yeah, and honestly, I I feel like that whole uh, shtick would be very difficult to keep up, and I have a really hard time believing that people didn't realize they were into each other. Well, every pretty much everyone around them did, like, right yeah. away. I would say, like, uh, his friend Che... Uh, Kamigwen, who is like an assistant to um, Andrade in a way. I I'm going to call her Cammy. She was actually yeah. Shaned's best friend. Yeah, yeah. Urival uh, is Andrade's second in command. Urival yeah, is male is, sunrunner. Yeah, there's, there's a couple of characters here. Um, what was I just talking about? Uh, so, any, so anyway, oh, they, he, they all he, knew. They all pretty much knew. Yeah, but that, I guess that people they, that weren't in their social circle maybe didn't, but I, I still kind of call shenanigans on that whole thing. Um, but whatever. But, and so anyway, he tricks everyone relatively successfully. Um, it, it's just used to build some, I guess, romantic tension. Kind yeah. Of. And they, they, you know, at this big tournament, it's called the Riala. It happens every three years. You are introduced to the big evil comical villain of the story. Uh, what the fuck was his name again? <laughs> Roelstra. Rolstra? I think it's Rolstra. Roelstra. Rolstra? Roelstra. Yeah, like, we don't know how to pronounce any of these names because they're not real, except Shined's a real name. Um, Royalstra. Oh, well, so, Ro, okay. Ro the... All-Star. <laughs> yeah, Somebody Ro once All-Star. told me that no. I couldn't have a son. <sighs> My no. penis doesn't make me an A or... No. <laughs> um, so, yeah, anyway, Rolstra, Roelstra, however you want to say it. He's the big evil, he's the high prince, and... He's, of course, a huge fucking bastard. You know, all he does is uh, try to produce a male heir, but unfortunately for him, he keeps having daughters. So he has 17 daughters. 
Yeah, he's um, basically misogyny in, in like incarnate. Yeah, he really is. He, he has internal monologues about how he thinks of women as his possessions, like overtly. Yeah, which I don't even think like real life misogynists do out the uh, gate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty. It's pretty bad. And so, yeah, the the book is very you know traditional, like good versus evil. Ugh. And I don't. Okay, I don't... wait. But before you, not to interrupt you, but before yeah, yeah. we go too off topic here, uh, can you name all of Rolestro's daughters? Oh fuck no! Um, all <laughs> okay, I let's... remembered. The... All right, because there's only like one page where they even mention most of them. Sure. The but, only okay. ones. All right. I'm all right. Gonna... So I'll go down the list here. And wait, then there's you can technically fill in... 18, right? With the baby. Yeah. Well, that's later on. But yeah. All right. Let, all right. I'll try to go down the list here. There's Ianth. Yanthe. Uh, I, I, is it we have so different pronunciations <laughs> of every single character, yeah. except Rohan and Shaned, I guess. Yeah, Rohan. I All say right. Rohan too. So I say Ianth. Yanthe. Um, there, there's there's Panda Salad. Um, very delicious. <laughs> Pansala. Yeah, Pansala. That that's, Pansala. that's the one we can agree Yanthe. on. There's, Those are the two uh, most important ones. There's someone that begins with another P that I forgot. Oh God, I don't remember this at all. There's I just remember a, the baby Chiana. Yeah, Ch- Chiana, Ch- Ch- I don't know. Chiana. There, yeah, there's a an airheaded one who I don't oh, know. Fuck, yeah, I, I don't forget remember. her name. Just just dullard, I guess. This. <laughs> yeah, and a lot of them were really young too, so there was like no point in them even. Talking yeah, they were about just them. immaterial to the story. But yes. I just like how she she had to inflate it to seventeen to like get across the point. Like, yo, this dude bones. Well, he's just and constantly trying to bone and get people pregnant, even though he hates how pregnant women. Yeah, he also does. hates pregnancy, even though he really wants an heir. It, yeah, it, he's like Chris. You know, like Chris said, he's just. A, caricature of misogyny kind of made flesh um every like little misogynistic thing you could think of he doesn't even give a lady his coat when it's cold outside paris nope. he shuts the door in ladies faces yep. when they're approaching yeah he doesn't give a fuck um <laughs> yeah. and so he has his daughter, so, he is, I, so he's scheming to produce an heir and his deal the reason why he has so many fucking children is because he keeps running through mistresses and wives so like basically he gives every woman four chances to produce a male heir which is like a hilarious like fucking i don't know video game way of thinking about this but it's like after the fourth one if it's not a boy he kills her or like his like one true mistress kills them i think she arranges a few deaths it says in palila did chat. yeah that's true so palila is like if you've ever read a song of ice and fire or watched game of thrones she's kind of cersei e um and andrade is kind of like oleana um i would say they're pretty decent parallels to these characters yeah, that's a pretty good uh one-to-one there palila is more like an extra slutty version of cersei that she- i mean are you She's, are you trying to say that Cersei is not slutty? Because if you are, we're gonna have an argument right now. But but she's more so like Palila is no, more than Cersei. No, no. she doesn't fuck uh, people in her family. Chris, sorry, true. Cersei. You know right. Cersei's you know incest what? tops tops anything true, else. True, true. All right, I'll yeah. concede the point there. All right, moving on. So anyway, you know, everyone's got all these political plots going on, but it's so very obviously laid out that it's. It, it becomes uninteresting because you just know what's going to happen all the time. Um, I guess the like interest is in, needs in an seeing heir. how they collide, like how they're yeah. elaborate. Like there's like Rohan's plot to get one over on Roelstra by you know faking the whole Shaned thing. Yeah, there's yeah. Roelstra's plot to get one over on everyone in the basically the entire country. I guess by you know. Uh, well, then he mar- wants to fuck Shined and steal yeah, her. He, he wants to marry I- I- into Rohan's family and like take over his kingdom by by marriage, I guess. In that, and also he knows Andrade probably wants to like set Shined up with Rohan because everyone knows Andrade wants to have like a sun runner ruler of the yeah, kingdom. So that the, like the- a sun ruler, a sun runner being a ruler is a super rare thing. And if she managed to have that happen in her family, she would have consolidated a lot of power. Yeah, and it would, you know, in her mind, it would ultimately be better for, you know, the world. Um, and, and the Sunrunner, you know, Andre de, Andrade is the, what is she called? The late, the lady of Goddess Keep? Something, She's yeah, the head just, Sunrunner. So, yeah, just, and in their in, religion. Um, Sunrunner in charge. Yeah, so she's, if okay, so if you listened to our, uh, our episodes about Wizard's First Rule and Stone of Tears, 
Kind of like, um, what's her name? The main character, Colin? Colin? Yeah, sure. Um, Ma- so, very powerful, magical lady who's kind of like the prime minister in a lot of ways. Like, sort of, but not really, because there's all these other princes, but her word is kind of it for a lot of stuff. And she yep. can, like, summon all the princes at will if she wanted to for a fucking picnic, you know? And, and like, yeah. everyone is forced to listen to her about a lot of things. So... She already wields a lot of power, and she and it, she's not evil. I don't think um, she's. She just seems. It just seems like she's uh, considering the good of everything. She's cunning, and she yeah. has ploys that, like, she believes to be for the good of the kingdom. Whereas Roelstra pretty much just wants to gratify himself and gain power for his own sake. Yeah, so. and and he's just stupidly evil, like many villains. In he's uh, constantly fantasy. twirling his mustache on yeah. a finger at all times. And, uh, and so, anyway, as the plotting continues, like Pensala and Iante, the two el- or two eldest legitimate daughters of Roelstra have their own plot going on, and then they fragment, and some shit goes down. Um, Their plot basically is to switch out a male baby with the baby that Palila is currently carrying, and they have this whole idea where they're like, okay, look, we'll bring, like, four pregnant ladies it, to the Riala. It's the stupidest fucking plan, and I and can't we'll believe it. And we'll induce labor book. all at the same time, because we can just do that. I don't yeah. know how hard that is to do in real life, but I'm I mean, you have to mi- use specific drugs, and I, I yeah, can't, with medieval yeah. medicine, it's probably a little tough. Yeah, so that plot was dumb, and then um, as and the then book moves just... on, there's like, you know, Yante uh, sort of comes to like minor power. She gets a castle from her dad, and she's just obsessed with with fucking Rohan because he rejected her, and you know, chose Shaned, and she just can't. She never gets over it. So she literally uh, yeah. plots to kidnap and rape him and steal his heir from his dick. Like, that is the end of the book. <laughs> just, yeah, just it's grabbing just like, it right out of your balls. Just, just take it's, it. But, it's uh, yeah, so I bad. Also don't the get back why... half of this book is just, nope. Yeah, yeah, I don't get why she was so hungry. Like, she, he rejected her at the Riala because he was in love with Shaned already. And there's this whole scene at the end where, like, because they, they present... It's like, there's like a wedding procession of everyone that agreed to get married and like Rohan comes in at the very end with Jeanette and everyone's like, oh my, he's done it now. And, you know, Rostra is very taken aback because he was under the impression that Rohan would uh, take one of his girls, like Ianth or Pan-, Pan Salad as his wife, I guess. Yeah. But it, that didn't happen. So, of course, so now- like years path, basically Ianth is just planning and plotting and I think it happens like, so... Six years after this initial Riala is when all that goes down, and like while that's happening, simultaneously, dra- dragons are also like almost extinct. And and so here's a thing that really bothers me about this book: this book skips over a pl- a plague event happening. It's yeah, basically it's- like if the Black Plague was just skipped over in every history book you ever read. Like what the fuck? I, I thought that really sucked. Like, I have no idea why the author didn't include that. It just, because it just sucked. that wasn't like, the important part of the story. There was literally just a mechanism to get rid of a bunch of characters. Because literally, like, four characters that you've been kind of following in the in the front half of the book are just eliminated. There's Rohan's mom. There's Cam Gwen, There's, uh, like, a couple other random aside characters. Yeah. Also, by the way, before this happens, Palila was burned alive in a boat by Rorostra <laughs> because, because he found out about the plot to switch the baby. Because, yeah. like, Ianth and Pansal wanted to switch uh, a male baby in for it so that they could, like, get more favor with their... With Rorostra? I forget how what the whole idea um, was there. So they were trying to help uh, Palila because... Oh, God, what was the reason? Um... Fuck, I don't remember now. Uh, they were, were trying they to help gonna, her like, out. Were they going to like double cross Palila and say yeah, like, "Oh, she she's, was... had, she's, she lied about the male baby." Killed no, her. no, that's not what they were going to do. They were going to um, help her, her. Oh, that's right. They were going to help her have a fake male child, and she was going to recommend one of them as um, top choice to marry Rohan because Rolstro was having difficulty oh, yeah. choosing okay, which daughter. Right. Yes, and I see. Pensala and Yante were both like. Yo, one of us wants to be it, and um, and of course they end up double crossing each other after everything goes wrong 
to save There's their There's like asses. so many crosses happening towards yeah. the end of the thing. But it all basically ends with Roelstra burning Polila alive in the boat that he came in on. So he has to and he walk just, back. And he killed like a bunch of his servants too. Like the whole... Yeah. And it's not just a boat. It's like a fancy river... Um, yeah, what do you call those? Yeah. Uh, a boat is very reductive. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's like, like a, fa- a fancy boat. Very fancy boat. Big um, fancy boat that can carry many people. So he burns that whole thing down. His whole party has to leave the Riala uh, like, on foot because Che won't even sell him the horses just because just to like be a dick or something. Or no, he, he did, but he jacked up the prices. So Che is like Rohan's best friend or whatever, and he's a, he's a minor lord, and he but he... Uh, breeds and raises the most excellent horses in all all the world, you know, or all the yeah. country or wherever this is. Um, so, 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 yeah, that, that, that happened before yeah. the plague thing. Like, she just a little aside, the roster just doesn't give a fuck about, you know, how he gets home as long as he makes a point, I guess. Also, before this, like, he has approached Shaned and, like, made very clear that, like, I want to do it with you. And then what he, like, confronts Andrade about it later, and he has a very childish moment where <laughs> Andrade's basically like, okay, it's not going to happen, buddy. I don't know what to tell you. And he's just like, I will have her. <laughs> and, yeah, it's a very and, silly and moment. so weirdly, I always thought that that, that he was going to try again, and then he just never does. And I was like, "Oh, okay." So I guess that whole thing happened for no reason. You know like, how those nice guys are. They, they can't handle rejection well, so they call her a slut and they leave. Yeah, <laughs> I guess. And she's ugly anyway. I didn't even need that sun runner. Yeah, I don't know. And then they get into this. I don't know. He talks about it later, but anyway, he never. He never develops the obsession with having sex with Shaned like his he, daughter he does Yante want has to like, with Rohan. He does want to, like, perma roofie her because there's a drug that's administered uh, to people in this book that Roelstra has control of or he has the source of where that can put you under his thrall because you need to keep getting the drug or else Okay, it's called Rohan. Dranoth and it's basically, like, plant heroin or something. Like sure. It's, um, but he has he has this one sun runner in his thrall because of it, and then he tries to give it to Shaned too. Except at first it's presented as like this is so addictive that if you even have a little bit, you're under the control of whoever's supplying. Yeah, it it's to like you fentanyl, forever. like you're done. And, but then it's not. Yeah, after that, because uh, Shaned does get a dose somehow. But it's you and you. I was thinking this was going to be a plot to like where oh, Shaned's like this kind of dr- uh, junky type now, and like is she good enough for Rohan now that she's on this H the, on the horse? Yeah, right. I guess. Like it would have it would have been more interesting if she had actually but no, suffered. But no, she's fine. She, and then she just gets over it later. Yeah, and then when the plague happens, turns out that this like plant heroin drug is the cure for the plague, but it it only work like it it works in what like. 80% of cases, but, like, some large percentage of people also die, and Shanet has to take it to survive the plague, but it makes her... They think it makes her barren. They're not really sure, because yeah, then they never has, end up producing an heir. That's, like, really the only way that the, the Dranath comes into the plot, because after that whole plague thing, I was also thinking, like, oh, cool, we're gonna get some kind of, like, balance of power where Rohan has to try to balance between I need the Dranath from Roelstra so I can't be a complete asshole to him, but at the same time, I'm trying to screw him over because he's always been trying to get one over on me, too. But no, the Dranath thing goes away after, like, the six-year time skip in the end. It's, like, really never well, an issue and, again. Well, and the book, you know, there's a lot of these, you know, Deus Ex Machina, fucking Hail Marys happening where... So we haven't really... T- the dragons are just kind of, like, this background thing. But um, during the plague, to get all the Dranath, uh, Rohan calls on his secret reserve of dragon gold because, hey, I guess when dragons... To, like die and drop and like shed stuff it turns into gold if you pulverize it shrug sure yeah like it's just oh, okay so dumb. yeah we're there's, there's a long list of stuff here that we're talking about that really doesn't have an overall effect on the plot at all there's the drana stuff there's the dragon background stuff there's like the plague thing that just gets glossed o- literally glossed yeah, over. Yeah, I in, like, really a, wish a, that the plague was in this book because what such, of, like it just would have made the deaths of those characters so much more effective. Like, what because... about the fucking Merida or the Meri- Merida or the whatever? Merida, yeah, the Merida ended up like not really being a thing. There's like a, the first half of the book, like Rohan has like three assassination attempts made on him by mm-hmm. these like. Uh, outrider, like outlaw types that have been harassing all the kingdoms for such a while. No, like, no, the... they were they were the original. They were the they were the original inhabitants of the desert. They're actually the native oh, okay. people well, of the desert. 
And sure, Rohan but- is the asshole white guy whose family took over a long time ago. Is basically what happened. But, um, you know, they don't really go into that much detail. But that's they're basically, going on. like I said, they're they're like harassers around the outskirts of the land, and like Rohan has to always consider like, oh, I need to protect the lands from yeah, the Merida yeah. or whatever. And there's three assassination attempts made on him, and there's maybe a little bit more assistance later in the book. But then after that back half happens, that never really mentioned again. They're not really an no, issue. No, I mean, well, the Merida are the Merida is the are the guys who kidnapped him for his uh, weird rape session. But that's really all it comes down to. Is like yeah. there's not really a grand plot beyond that. Is that they're just kind of like on hire for Rorelstra to harry Rohan. Yeah. I thought they were going to be a much, much bigger thing, and that's the point I'm trying to make with all these yeah, little yeah. elements that I thought would like come together really nicely in the end, but they all mm. really didn't. And maybe, and maybe that's again just because this is the first book in a series, so like. Who knows? But but sure, there wasn't even much like set up for like where yeah. they could be going later. So all right, so at the so towards the end, like after all that shit happens, um, Shined and Rohan have this like really successful, relatively successful reign for six years. You know, he saves every saves most people from the plague, whatever. Um, and then Yante kidnaps Rohan and rapes him. And forces him to impregnate oh, her with an heir. Oh, well, go, you know, you, you gloss it over pr- pretty much like the one awful crux of this book, which is that whole scene between the two of them where they uh, Rohan's kidnapped and put under like imprisonment by Yanth, and she. Uh, when you say the word rape, it's like well, she okay, does that so to I him, didn't. I didn't want to get into in, it. I just want to finish the plot points, and then we can go back and talk about that. Okay, well... That's fine. all. All right, so let's just get through the things that happen, and then we can go back and talk about that. That can be the first thing we talk about. All right, So anyway, sure. that happens. Shined goes to try to rescue him. It doesn't work. Meanwhile, all the kingdoms are warring, because, like, Rolf's just trying to take advantage of the fact that, you know, Rohan got captured, and shined has gone, the, and whatever. The plague has, you know, eviscerated a lot of political power across the land. Yeah, there's... there's, there's all there's kinds of movements. A lot of minor lords getting involved and shit, and there's a lot of, like, battle stuff, um... So that's all fine and good, and then the very end is, like, Rohan and Shined allowing Yante, like, Yante lets them go, just, like, because she wants uh, to have the baby and take over, but of course, like, Rohan and Shined are like, no, we're gonna, we're gonna kill her and take the baby, and that's exactly what they do. They name the baby, and then they pretend the baby is theirs, and no one is any the wiser. We're gonna talk about how dumb all that shit is in a few minutes, um, but... Also, uh, Rorostra and Rohan have a sort of knife oh, fight yeah, a, yeah. in a ring of fire at the end. In a that's... ring of, like, magical sunrunner fire bubble thing. Sure. And yeah. uh, Rohan stabs Rorelsta a couple of times. There's also a knife fight in, d- during the first Riala, kind of. Yeah, Where yeah. they get in each other's faces and then they... Yep. There's a lot of, like, people getting into very serious situations and then just, like, cooling off and walking away. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone, like, really just drops it really a lot weird. of the time. Oh, yeah. And then at the very, very end, turns out Pansala was, like, the fucking G and helped them from behind the scenes this whole time. And I was like, what? Really? Why? Like, <laughs> like there was no motive. It was like no motive for yeah. her to do that. It didn't really make yeah, any sense. Yeah, I didn't get that either. But anyway, so yeah, so those are all the basic plot points. Let's go back and talk about um, some things. So we can start with the um, the crazy kidnapping and rape the, thing. Yeah, the, okay. I, I, would like, I would like to discuss why raping men is like a thing in fantasy books and also weird sex stuff is a thing in fantasy books all the time and i just don't understand why those things are i mean it's a fantasy novel right you can't just have vanilla fucking in a fantasy novel because you know if it's not like (laughs) why why not have no fucking no rape uh, that would be great you know i would usually much prefer that honestly but uh I think that's really what it comes down to is, like, you got to have something weird happening in everything in a fantasy book. Like, you just can't have a normal fucking meal anymore. It has to be fucking dragon pears or, <laughs> yeah. you know, magic meat or I but don't I know just, But I just think it, it's really disturbing that that's Taste my normal. magic meat. Yeah, I just think it's <laughs> I'm really... I'm the meat wizard. Taste... Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, no. And, and th- like, this, character. this situation is, like, extra fucked up because... He gets kidnapped by Yante's Marita, like, assassin dude or whatever. I, I also think his kidnapping was kind of bullshit. Like, I kind of don't feel like it was very He literally, like, reasonable. wanders off 20 feet and he's just and ambushed And he's done. By... Yeah, I was yeah. like, that doesn't make any sense. Especially since he's he's 
such uh, he has such fighting prowess, and he's such a strat uh, a, a um a strat- Yeah, that's the technique. <laughs> that, yeah, every a, all the great strategians of say? history. What the great strategians of history <laughs> what by am I Paris. Trying to say? I keep want to say status, status, statistician and strategery. I don't know. How about just <laughs> general or yeah, he is commander? A, oh, God. I, I'm done. So so that's bullshit. Like, the way that he gets kidnapped is kind of bullshit. And then, so, Yante has spent months having her servants create a room specifically for the raping and, and imprisonment of Rohan that is decked out entirely in dragon mating... Uh, like pillows and dragon mating bed hangings and dragon mating sheets. It's Basically, very weird. a furry porn room that she yeah. has custom made or scaly porn. I, guess. I don't know if there's a difference for you know. Please, yeah. uh, you know, I guess feel free to correct, but maybe don't correct me. I don't know. Yeah, I don't really want to know if any of our listeners have <laughs> in-depth knowledge like that. Don't correct us. Um, uh, so she she goes through all the this effort, or rather forces people to go through all this effort yeah, to create she, she's this. She's just laying back, and she's commissioning all of her dragon porn. She's and, not doing any yeah, of the hard work here. And so she kidnaps him and has him drugged with that same drug, Dranath. And I just feel like, like kind of like we mentioned before, the use of, the application of this drug and its effects are very inconsistent throughout the book. I don't really understand that. It doesn't really make any sense. Like like Chris was saying before, you know, it's like, oh, first it's like, oh, it's super addictive. Like, you get one hit and you're hooked for life, but then not. And then other people take it and they're not really having, they're not hallucinating. But then in this instance, Rohan ends up hallucinating and thinking Yante is Shined. And so he has sex with her willingly the first time because he doesn't realize it's not Shined because he's so, like, fucked up on the drug. And so that was weird. And then he realizes that it's that it's not Shined. But then he just keeps having sex with her while he's imprisoned there? Sure, yeah. That's really the most confusing part of this whole book yeah, to like, me. Where... So he keeps having sex with her. And then afterward, he refers to it as he as though he was raping her. He's like, I'm a rapist. I'm a raper. And I'm like, no, you... <laughs> Buddy, no, not really. No. <laughs> If someone is, like, literally lying there saying, impregnate me, I don't really classify that. I I mean, I guess in his mind it was, like, because he went violent with it or something. But, but like, they I, never even talked about that until after, until when he was thinking back on it. And even I don't know, then, she's into, like, dragon fucking too, dude, yeah, so, man. like, maybe she's fine with it being a little rough. Also, can I say that this was the only, se- like, sex thing in the book that was, like... Ex- kind of even explicitly laid out instead of like fading to black every other encounter between like Rohan Shined or even other people it always like kind of cut out right before yeah which I was but really happy the with one, and then this and then this fucking uh, this, this is guy. the one that is yeah. I guess sort of detailed in and it wasn't yeah, that like, bad I understand... it, I, it wasn't that bad but it was kind yeah. of frustrating because the characters definitely say some dumb shit during that scene um, also, like, was it just like the Dranath had him so messed up that he was like, "I better keep humping." I guess that's like, all I no. can do. And, and it just didn't make any sense that he would keep willingly having sex with her, and and then that he kept referring to the whole scenario as though he was raping her. And he's like plagued by that for the rest of the remaining pages of the book, where he's like, "I'm a rapist and I, I'm a terrible person," and like. He and Shined, after they escape, you know, after they're freed from the mm-hmm. castle, after all this happens, they're like uh, trying to cross the desert and survive, and they're in a cave, and I don't know. They have this weird exchange where he, they like, he like grabs her and bends her over, and she's like, "You'll not have me like that, man!" Like you, <laughs> and it's just like I don't know, man. It, it was just really, yeah. He, this book gets real terrible he, towards the end. <laughs> I don't understand why it was that angle because, like, you could have yeah, gone it from it. like he was traumatized by a fucking sexual assault. Yeah, and he could he could think he's like broken goods based on that alone. But to, I guess maybe it's his way of coping with it. Is and to say, so, like, yeah, I was the assaulter, and that's the only thing that I could really think of that made any sense. Because the alternate theory is that this author is really out of touch and is normalizing the idea that men cannot be raped, which I really don't want to believe because that's really fucked up. Um, I, sure, I think yeah. it's hopefully, like you said, where he's so traumatized by it that he doesn't want to believe that he's a victim, and so he doesn't talk about it that way. Um, 
Which is possible. And, and I don't know. I just... I, we, so, here's the other he, thing. He was like... He's like, I have to kill her. And then he doesn't kill her. Even He's like, oh, there's nothing pointy in this room. And I'm like, dude, you could have choked her with any of these bed hanging sheets. Yeah. <laughs> like, anything. And he just never does. He's like, I mean, yeah, I, I really wish I could have like, killed her. It's really too bad. And I was like, you could have, though. Well, but then the guards come and you get thrown in the dungeon and, like, you know, executed for murdering the princess or, you know, I'm sure that... Well, yeah, you know, but part- but still better than uh, better than being raped and forced and forced to have some evil woman have your heir instead of the wife that you love, right? I guess like, you could also just stop humping, too. Yeah, I, mean, I guess right? she could, like, tie you down and have her way with you, too, and literally extract the heir from you if she really wanted, but, like, you don't have to... Yeah, I and that whole these thing are was all you know traumatic situation, but it it just didn't make the back half of the book. It it, it feels like a different person wrote it, or it was like yeah, rushed in or yeah. something. Because the front half is really cool. It's got all this court intrigue stuff. It's a little gossipy in some points. It almost feels like a bunch of people gossiping to each other about what no, they but heard. There's, but there's like strategy, and I like some the stuff about the sunrunners. Yeah, we learn about that, them and their that culture. Part, that was all really cool. And then yeah. a plague happens, and then there was no good writing ever again after the plague. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, it, was, it, like, really was, is, it really is like somebody else took It was took really over. a bad writing disease that happened. So I'm wondering, I don't know, did she come back to this book? Uh, months later, years later, or, and like... Who knows? I mean, it could be that. That happens with authors all the time. Um, yeah. But and there then, was a c- clear qualitative difference between the front half of the book yeah. and the back half of the book. Yeah, because even the dia- like even some of the dialogue is like not as good in the in the latter portion of the book. Um, and then at the end, like there, the whole decision between Shined and Rohan to keep the baby instead of just killing Yante, I think is ridiculous. And it, this whole thing, it's just because they're like, oh, well, we need an heir, right? Like, we may as well take it while we can get it, because you're probably barren. And it's like, how about, no, how about, like, I, I don't, the thing, it kills me because throughout this whole book, though we didn't discuss it much, Rohan is very much about trying to sort of change the rules of the game for uh, politics, for princedoms, for princes and princesses. And he Pretty does much this. He, he does this throughout of... the whole book. And so it really doesn't make sense that in this one thing, he, he just needs to stick to tradition. And it's like, ah, oh, I just hate it. It's such a, fu- well, it's another stupid fucking trope in life as well, in real life, where people think that having a, a male son is their only purpose. And if they if they can't get it from their regular wife, they're gonna get it no matter what it takes. And it's like, there, damn it. There's another instance of him like having like a, a weird traditionalist streak in him when earlier on, uh, he finds out that there's like this sun runner virginity ritual where I oh, guess when, yeah. you, when you become of age as a sun runner oh, for yeah, the we first gotta talk time. About, oh, so this is this is yeah, more creepy sex shit. Yeah, ho- yeah hold on. By the way, I, I want to explain this part from yeah. my perspective that's happening here. So I guess when you turn of age as a sun runner, Andrade picks someone for you to to come fuck you for the first time. Although it's blind on your part uh, for both males and females, well, I guess. Like, yeah, which which leads to the question: like, why isn't it double blind? But anyway, sh- sure. Or and, I think it's so, supposed to be. I'm sorry it is supposed to be maybe but we maybe. later learn that sometimes it's not people pretty much figured it out because it turns out Urival was the one that took Shined's virginity which is creepy Andrade, as fuck yeah because Andrade was like I guess that uh, I had to choose someone for Shined to get hurt on with the, for the first time which is like why is that a thing is it like the thing in Sword of Truth where it's like oh to cleanse you of your fleshly desires but only this one time really or to like I don't know well, get you yeah, over the idea it's... of being a virgin it just makes me think yeah. that Andrade sitting up in her tower going like hmm so who should I send to fuck this person yeah isn't that so fucked up and I yeah it, again it's like what is the purpose of it they don't really go over that it's just sort of like oh, this is our, our coming-of-age ceremony also includes coming. Like, that's just, yeah, like, sure. what their thing is, which and is there's this strange. whole exchange be- between Urival and Andrade, where Urival's were like, he, like, gets catty at her. Or, no, Andrade gets catty at Urival. He's like, I shouldn't have sent you to her to, you know, take her virginity. And Urival's like, well, you're the one that fucked me, so what is it? What is, yeah, and then, and, then, and then that shit gets weird. And then you also find out that, like, I think Andrade and Rolstra were... Uh, perhaps destined to be together and ultimately Some, were not. Yeah, something screwed up. Anyway, the point I was getting to is that Rohan, like, finds out about this ritual and he's, like, kind of upset about it when he first finds out. Oh my out. god, he's, he's such a 
oh my god, he's such an asshole. He's like, he's like, how many have you been with, you fucking whore? Like, <laughs> Jesus, dude. It's like, like, he's like a super, like, understanding and, like, almost feminist at some other points, but then, like, this one instance, he's like, who touched you, though? And that was another instance of the book where it felt like somebody else was writing it, because I was like, this isn't how this, you didn't build this character to react this way, so why is this, like, it doesn't really make sense. Um, yeah, the, that that's probably the main issue with with my with the book here is that she spent a lot of time building up these characters kind of super well and then they do stuff that's totally not at all in in line character with what you yeah. expect yeah and it's I mean, not like in like a, oh it's a twist way it's just like a weird decision for that person to make or a weird thought for that person to have because i really don't understand why you know rohan's not being traditionalist at all and in this one instance he's like no but you must be unsullied even and, though and like, it would he be, admits and it, to, it like, would, looking would at be, other girls, too? Yeah, and it would be different. And he even says, like... Maybe I should take one for my own yeah, before yeah. Shaned so that I know what I'm doing. Also, there's the whole bath scene with him and Andra. <laughs> oh, God, that was weird. Yeah, I forgot about that. So, um, Rohan is how old during the scene? 16? Yeah, he's like 18? a 16-year-old prince at first. 16 or 18, somewhere in there. Not Not younger than 16 and not older than 18, so... yeah. 17 let's say as a as a medium. yeah so um he is like talking to andrade and their conversation is they're having like a not heated discussion but kind of like an involved discussion and they walk they walk into the room and he's like all right i'm gonna take a bath now and she's like whatever i'm your aunt i've seen you naked and he's like uh and you know as a reader you're kind of like uh he's sort of too old for like you're a naked child kind of an excuse because he's like maybe, 17 or you know, something. Maybe this family's real comfortable with some skin. They live in the desert. I don't know. Like, yeah, that was that was weird. Uh, I was like, that's that's a strange... And like, like, at during least put the a screen scene, up. Don't, don't forget like the part where Andrade's like, hey, I saw your boner when I talked about Shaned that time. Yeah, that was he, weird. She like mentions Shaned and like then notices Rohan getting like a halfie or something. Yeah, like, which... Ugh, yeah. So that was a little strange, too. So there are definitely some really weird choices in this book. Um, yeah, but mostly this is, like, this book is, like, if you combined A Song of Ice and Fire and the Dune, and the first Dune book, it's very much... And, like, replace the sandworms with dragons, and, like, you know, I mean, even some of the names are the same. Like, there's a Viserion in this. Um, some of the situations are the run. same. There's a river There's a run. River. <laughs> There's at the very the beginning of the book opens just like a Game of Thrones opens, where you know the the leader goes on a hunt, gets injured, and like dies and has to give his you know kingdom to his son. I mean, it's not totally the same, but it's like pretty close. Yeah. And um, there's even an all powerful Paul at the end of the book. <laughs> Yep. Much like Dune. Uh, yeah, I felt like I was reading Game of Dune Thrones um, a lot of the time. Dune of Dune of Thrones. Dune of Thrones. Game of Dunes. Game of Dunes. A, a song of uh, sand and light. The... Sun. Moon. Um, yeah, and like, yeah, so, at the, so the baby that they kidnap and pretend is their own at the end of the book, um, they end up naming it Pole. Paul? Pa- Paul? Paul? Pa- Paul. It's Paul. P- P-O-L, so Paul. I just Paul. can't help but think that it's Paul, just like Paul Atreides. And it's, it's, it's actually Pool, Paris. <laughs> it's a long O. Oh, and it turns out the baby is already a super sick sunrunner in infancy. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. He's sending light emails, like, as a baby. Uh, yeah, there was, like, uh, so Shaned does, like, his, the child's naming ceremony, um, cause there, there's like a war raging. So Rohan was like out, you know, warring up. So he wasn't there. So she does the naming ceremony with, with, uh, Tobin, who is Rohan's sister and someone, is it Tobin's husband? I think so. Uh, yeah, I think. And, um, or no, is Cammy's husband, Osville, I think. But anyway. Yeah. Um, what do you the... think is, what do you think is in a baby light email? Yeah. I don't know. Um, <laughs> that, that just demanding food or tits all the time. Yeah, I have no idea. And so she's doing the naming ceremony, and during the naming ceremony, she does something no Sunrunner has ever done before, of course, because the main characters have to be extra special. Um, she uses starlight to weave her Sunrunner stuff, 
which is something that's forbidden to Sunrunners because they can often get, what does it, get uh, shadow lost? Yeah, basically if you stray off the light path and you go into the dark part or something, you get, like, your consciousness gets stripped away from your body forever or something. Yeah, which is kind of a cool concept, but, um, yeah, and so they're not allowed to use starlight because starlight isn't light from, you know, the sun that lights the universe like sunlight and moonlight because moonlight is a reflection of sunlight of course those two are safe but starlight is you know light from some burning gas giant <laughs> that's probably already dead so i guess it's i don't know more dangerous and no one's ever been able to do it so she does it in paul's name Paul's naming ceremony and Excuse um pool and she also like can see the baby's light name or light pattern or whatever and then his, his baby ip yeah and then she uses that to like some she rides the starlight which is like kind of what they do they can so in addition to sending sun emails they can also kind of like um if there's enough light they can ride the light ning they can ride <laughs> the light to look to like spy on places and see stuff at great distances so i guess it's it's like it's like google earth and emails only like that's how that's how this works and so she so like basically the sun runners sun... are just medieval IT technicians. Yeah, like sort admins. of. <laughs> and so she somehow during the naming ceremony she knows that Rohan is fighting Rolstra, even though they're nowhere really near each other, and she rides the light with her with Tobin's light fire stuff and the babies, and then she like takes over Andrade and Pansala and like manipulates all these people into creating this dome around Rolstra and Rohan, and I honestly have no idea why that was even done. Dra drama. You know, those Sun Runners, they just really appreciate a good uh, anime uh, knife fight. Yeah, That's like... That's really all it is. I, I would have understood if she had put it around Rohan to protect him, but no, it was around Rohan and Rolstra so that they would have a smaller environment in which to fight. Like, that doesn't make any sense? Like, because I it's didn't... fucking cool, man. That's yeah, really Yeah, it was, that was... That was strange. Um... Yeah, and, you know, this book is very fantasy book tropey for all the ways you described, and also because, yeah, as I kind of just mentioned, the main characters are just, like, s the coolest of the cool, they're the best, and their best friends are all the best people ever, and they're so great, they have no flaws, and um, all the bad people are really bad people, you know, <laughs> it's very, like, Midwestern yeah, mom. Yeah, they're... they're... That's kind of standards. one of the things that I think people love uh, Song of Ice and Fire so much is that you can kind of get everyone's motivations for doing certain things. And, like, Roelstra's motivation in this just seems to be fucking snidely whiplash Mr. Evil guy. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. he walks into the bathroom and doesn't wash his hands after he takes a piss because he's evil. Yeah, yeah there's, no, there's no real nuance to the characters. I think that, um, I think the author tried, but didn't execute well um, in that Maybe respect. Maybe something had to have happened during that split between, I don't know, she got drenathed while she was trying to write this thing. Yeah, really? Someone well, else who was writing like an anime fanfic yeah. took control of her. I don't know. And there's, there's also, it's also kind of your standard, like I said, you know, patriarchal ruling system, standard heterosexual true love story. Like, it's all, it's all those same familiar parts. Um... There, there is so there is a really stupid minor thing that drove me fucking crazy about this book, Chris. What do was you it? do you remember what it was? Nope. All right, the people in this world don't know how to eat fruit. They don't know how All to right, eat fruit. Yeah, I forgot it's about so that. It's so dumb, but it bothered me because it popped up in two scenes, kind of early in the book, and I was like, "There is like what? There's no fucking reason for this." All right, so first scene, first evidence for these people don't know how to eat fruit. Um, one of the opening scenes is Andrade sitting with her sister Milar, who is um, Zahava's wife, Rohan's mom. Not that that matters. And they're having this conversation, and Andrade is um, taking advantage of her sister's sort of like lack of strategic intellect and is like trying to lead her to. Uh, a excuse decision. me, strategeriness? Uh, <laughs> yeah. <Paris? laughs> Strate she's not a strategiarian. Strategiarian. Yeah, not, not a strategiarian. Um. And so they're having this conversation and while they're talking, they're eating grapes. As you do. So the way they eat grapes, though, so like as any normal person or non-human animal does, you just pick up a grape and put it in your mouth and you chew it, swallow <laughs> it. These people pick up a grape, suck the inside out and throw the grape skins in a pile. <laughs> How do you suck the inside? I do you don't suck the know. Of, and I was is like, it like a really thick. Do you have like thick grape skins over know. there? 
I thought it was so stupid. I was like, all right, that was weird. I was like, I don't maybe know. It, maybe it's like the thing where, like, the, the skin of the fruit has the bacteria all over it, so you take that off so you don't get all, like, the extra... Yeah, I was wondering know, I was wondering if it was, like, a pesticide thing, like, how they're how they're grown. Like, maybe they don't eat the skin for that reason. Or, yeah, like you said, maybe that it's poisonous. But, like, it's just a grape, man. And then, like, a couple hundred pages later, there's some banquet happening, and one of the minor lords eats a plum... But again, instead of picking up a plum as you would because it's a hand fruit and simply biting it and he shoves chewing it and swallowing, up into his butt. <laughs> no, he does not use it as a suppository. He picks it up, takes his knife, cuts it open, sucks the inside of the plum out, and throws the plum skin in a pile. And I was like, what the fuck? You should Why? see it, man. You know, in, in book two, they eat watermelons by cutting it in half, wearing it like a hat, and <laughs> yeah, their like, way I out just... of it. And I just, I just really, like, all it needed, all it needed was one line after that first grape eating session that said, oh, the, you know, those grape skins sure are full of pesticides, or oh, those grape skins sure are full of cat piss, like, I don't know, like, so, anything to describe. Cat pissed all over these grapes, fucking again. Yeah, like, um, anything to describe why they were doing oh, that. Oh, you know what it was, though? But you no. Know what happens, well, you know what happens when you don't suck the grape out of the skin? <laughs> you catch the fucking plague. That's what happened. <laughs> yeah, that's... Oh, my God. They started People eating the fruit skins, and that's how the plague out. started. Yeah. Uh, no. You, you joke um, now, Paris, but look at how many people randomly died because they yeah. wouldn't suck a grape off. <laughs> um. Oh, yeah, and breakfast suck wine off my is grape, a thing Paris, in this, or you in this world. <laughs> breakfast wine is a thing in this world, which I also thought was kind of... Weird. I mean, that's a thing in the real world, too, if you really want it to be. No one, yeah, the, I guess. the cops aren't going to break your door down. If that's it true. Turns out. I do, I do like wine. I've, I've, I seem to like wine more as I get older. I don't know what that's about. Um, I never really used to like wine, and now I'm like, yeah, wine. Um, uh, that's just uh, old lady stuff happening you yeah. know, as you get older. Uh, as a man, I'm clearly going to start liking uh, butterscotches a lot more as and I get older. And whiskey. And yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a it's a prerequisite, I guess. So yeah, I mean that's pretty much this book. Um, it it was not. I think that I think that Chris thought it was so good because it was just so much better than most of the crap we usually read for the show. Uh, but the front but, half was really good, though. Yeah, it was all right. Um, was like I said, I did I do think it was most overall it was pretty well written and that I appreciated. It. Um, but was I would not I would not continue were... reading the series. There was a lot of relationships that I thought were interesting up front. I really kind of liked like how Rohan and Shanet at first, like, were skeptical of each other, even though they were okay, super into well, each other. Okay, you, well, you say that, but I really think that if you read the lines closely, you'll reveal that that was kind of them just posturing at each other and trying to hide the fact that they both were, like, 100 million percent super into Well, yeah, it is, but at the same time... I don't time, think there was least... any real skepticism there. I mean, but only only least... when Rohan was like, oh, you're a hoe for having your yeah. weird sex ceremony at the Sunrunner <laughs> College, and that was really the only time they had... It was just Sunrunner forth. break, you know? You just have <laughs> yeah. a little fun. It's part of the experience. What, give me a break. But uh, I, I even even that, even if it was just that, that's still a layer more than a lot of other like love at first sight things where they're just super into each other at the gate yeah. and everything's cool and fine and dandy. Yeah, that's true. Um, they they tried to have a little tension there. Um, I like you know I I found the relationship between Toby and Tobin and uh, Che kind of charming and cute. Yeah, I and, did like, too. I thought so. And their kids and then um, Cammy. They, they and had Austin. a cute little family happening. Like yeah. that was kind of interesting to read at some point. Not necessarily like deep or anything. It was just like oh, here's a nice healthy little family. Yeah, and, and it was and it was this. it was well written. It wasn't like cheesy or corny or anything. I feel like it was very human, like the way that all that was described. That was probably the most realistic part of the whole book was that little family in the circle I, right there. You know there. what I really wish is that the dragons had more of a presence in this book because they 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 come in at the last second to like break up a portion of Roelstra's army. Like there's a point where Rohan's like, "Oh, I'm screwed. Roelstra's got all this power along over here, and he's got me cornered by these two in, at these two sections over here. My strategiariness is failing <laughs> me." And then. The, like at one point, like uh, uh, he rides into Roelstra's camp to confront him, and they're all being attacked by baby dragons because no one hunted them yet. And then, yeah, and and that, like that's how that army is gotten rid of in the story is dragon ex machina. Yeah, it's really dumb, and I don't know because right at the beginning of the book, it seems like dragons are going to be really important because the book opens with 
Zahava hunting that dragon that ultimately kills him. Um, and then Rohan goes after the dragon and slays it, even though he doesn't really want to. He does it just sort of as like a, hey, I need to show people that I'm as basically as cool as my dad was. And also this dragon killed my dad. So like, fuck this one dragon in particular. Um, so, but like, he really loves dragons and, and he's like super into them and doesn't want, like, he knows that they're important to the ecosystem. Um, and most people don't realize that. So, uh, at the beginning, it really seems like there's going to be a lot of cool dragon stuff because there's like this detailed account of like their mating rituals and like the caves they use and like when it happens and how it happens and all this stuff. And I was like, oh, okay. At first I was like, oh, it's kind of weird. Like how kind of, uh, so, like surgical the, this detail is, but I was like, oh, that's cool. But then it just I goes away. Melanie Ron but then it just goes away. Really likes the I- Melanie Ron just really likes the idea of dragons going at it because there's that stuff. There's the t- the dragon porn room. Yeah. There's like <laughs> a whole bunch of like references to Rohan kind of like being the sexual dragon. I think there's like two. Or yeah, three and then oh, and that's the other the other like similarity is because Rohan has always kind of been the guy that's like, you know, you probably shouldn't kill dragons. They're important to the ecosystem. Eh. Um, and then the dragons mysteriously help him during a fight, uh, even though, you know, it's not intentional, but these are kind of a superstitious sort of people. They have a, you know, religion or whatever. Everyone starts calling him, what was it, Azrai, Dragon Prince? And I was like, Azor's eye? Yeah. Azor's eye has risen! Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was like, Pretty man, much. you couldn't have come- Yeah, so there's just a lot of- overlap with other fantasy series and in sort of minor ways. I didn't ways. bother to look at the publish it, publication date on this, so I don't know if this came after uh, a Song uh, of Ice This is in the 80s. Is it 82? Oh, so then it might have came before. So maybe uh, this is where George ganked his shit. Yeah, maybe. Oh, uh, 85. Nope. I think... Uh, copyright is 85. First printing was 88, but 85 is when it was copywritten, so... I think Game of Thrones was in the 90s, so... Um, I... I'm going to do some... You're going to hear some clickety-clacks, and I will uh, check up on that, because I don't know... Well, that might be true. Yeah. Um, I mean, we're coming on the tail end of this episode. I was trying to think of anything else I had to say about this. You know, as far as being the patron-recommended book, it was a fine read that actually kept me interested. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm glad... Um, oh, 1991, A Game of Thrones was first... Uh, was... Okay, so maybe he was... Yeah, maybe yeah. it's the other way around. Maybe we're not giving due credit shit. where it's due. Yeah, J.R.R. Martin, I hope you didn't fucking yank shit from this book, so I'll be... J. R. R. Martin, the unholy fusion. Why did I say of... J. George R. God, I'm, I'm fucking. <laughs> what would that book be like? It's just endless series of feast descriptions and like elf <laughs> genealogy. So, but that's it. It's... That's all. It's, that's all it's. <laughs> oh my god! I didn't realize I mixed them up. Oh god. Um. Yeah. So yeah. the story behind me being kind of off my rocker today is, um, I slept for four hours last night. Uh, got up, and then tried to be normal but then accidentally fell asleep in the middle of the day and ac- had an accidental nap and I can't really nap naps kind of fuck me up so I'm kind of all I don't know I just feel weird I feel like I'm I feel like I just woke up even though I've been awake all day so except for the accident yeah I'm nap. coming off of like a, a, a lengthy rehearsal commute because my commutes to some band rehearsal spaces are two hours one way yeah you're insane so I, had, I, I just don't yeah. understand why you do that to yourself that's the life of uh, public transport and uh, trying to you know work around other people's schedules it's well just how I mean it, it rolls no up. it's because you chose to have a practice space in New Hampshire that is the reason <laughs> Honestly, it was the only one that was, like, decent and available, and, the like, it was sort of the midpoint between... I was the one that got boned on that yeah. one more than anyone else. Definitely, I mean... Because everyone else lives super far away from the city, and I am the only one that has to stick to where there's a lot of public transport. Anyway, back to books instead of my life. Um, yeah, fuck your life, Chris. Of, no uh, one cares. I'm try- <laughs> Yeah, no one really does. Uh, I'm trying to think of more stuff about this book that was... Like, we covered most of the terrible stuff, like, in the, in the back half, like... Uh, my big problem, again, was, like, all these little segments, like, the Merida, the Dranath, the dragons that I thought were going to come together much more cleanly and more interesting, but yeah. they just didn't in the end. It really boiled down to just the baby-switching plot, uh, the weird rape scene, and the knife fight between Rorelster and Rohan because they were such bitter enemies because of who wanted to have sex with what woman. Yeah, like, and there's, I, I there's like, a bunch of details that we skipped over, just, like, smaller things, like... Sunrunners can't stand being on water, and they get really violently ill and pass out usually, so there's, like, this constant running thing in the book where 
they don't like to travel by water and they try to avoid it and it can be really disastrous well, like if, if they do but nah. that doesn't matter to a plot discussion no. or like a functionally um, like why the book is good or not there's but. some random words like you know melanie ron didn't didn't construct um a, a super rich world in terms of language there are some words like i think it's azrai is dragon prince and then faradi and faradim are sunrunner and sunrunners uh Okay, so like, but what is that language from? Because they're all speaking English, so is that yeah. just some ancient language? I don't. Yeah, like, that's like never they really... don't really explain. There, yeah, there's a lot of, uh, and then the uh, that's just fantasy spice. Yeah, what are the uh, what fantasy. are the lords called? Like all the princes. Uh, I don't remember. I uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't even matter. No. Though. Yeah, and it it did bother me that you know we didn't really under, didn't really find out like what the hell. Language I, it, it's literally be. just fantasy spice. You know, yeah. that, there's some things you do just for fantasy spice. Uh, weird words in italics is one of them. Uh, a lot of vowels next to each other and like weird consonant combinations for name is another fantasy spice. Yeah, this apostrophes in actually did is a fantasy spice. They actually did not do normal name, weird name. They did all weird names in this book. It's all weird. Everything's weird. Yeah, there's not like a random mark or something in the. You know, like Kalan and then you know Zed and Richard. <laughs> oh shit! I found some more Rolster's daughter names. The really oh, yeah, dumb so one was named some. Nadra, I think. Okay. And no, then Lenala. Lenala was the dumb one. Nadra was the other kind of dumb one. Gavina. Uh, sleepy, dopey. Yeah, happy. Rusalka. Uh, who they paint as a lesbian, maybe. Um. Yeah, I don't know. Just a bunch of dumb names. It doesn't really doesn't Thing really one, matter. Yeah, woman two. Um. <laughs> yeah. The other like really doony thing about this book is that uh, it's in a fucking desert. It, well, it's that, well that, the that. the desert kingdom. I mean, there's you know there's Dorne in in Song of Ice and Fire, but sure, yeah. yeah. This in this book, it's like it's dune ish because they have to go through a lot of pains to like reroute the water, and water's like very precious in the desert. But that's something that's only said and not demonstrated ever, so I didn't really feel like it was yeah, as not present. Yeah, plot critical or even, yeah. like, like, you know, political maneuver. Even though it should political... have been. Even though it should have been. Poli- but anyway. Yeah, these aren't, these aren't political strategariums that are yeah. uh, necessary in this book. I'm really milking that joke. Yeah, you really are. Um, I'll stop. I'll that's stop. That's fine. Um, yeah, I mean, so I guess, I guess that's kind of it. I mean, I went through all my notes. I don't think I have anything else to say about it okay, well here's here's the final uh i guess the argument that i was gonna have is like is this a good book is it is it a terrible book or not uh it's kind of terrible i mean it it's rides not for, aggressively terrible. so for me it's like it's like a aeon legion labyrinth it's like yeah all right this wasn't so terrible but i don't know i mean and i know that when we read aeon legion i was like yeah i'll read the next one but i'm like no no i won't I'm not gonna read that. Yeah, like, yeah. who am I kidding? You could just watch any random anime. And I think I, that I think I was just had. coming off the high of like reading an okay book after reading a bunch of really shitty books, and that's that's the problem. Is sometimes our perspective gets a little skewed when we have you know kind of a drought, you know, where we're just reading real garbage, and then we read something that's not total garbage, and we're like, oh, this is great, but in reality, it's yeah, not great. That, it's fine. That's how I felt at the front half of this book, and then when the bad writing plague hit, <laughs> it just kind of... All the loose ends just didn't tie up in a very satisfying or pleasing way. It it, it ended up being a lot more two-dimensional than I thought it was yeah, going to be. Yeah, it's very two-dimensional. Um, but, but like, there's so much promise in yeah, the first half yeah. of... of and and Melanie Ron has written other series, but I read the description of one of them in the back, and it's just the same shit. You know, it's like uh, the Golden the, Key the... is like another one of her things, and so although that seems to have three authors, and then she also wrote um, Exiles, which is some some other series, but I think that's kind of it. It's about it's about eggs that that are. In an island, it's Eggs Islands. Oh no, so no, no, it's not. It's it's like a fantasy world about living eggs. So it's and so it egg people. Oh, so it's Yoshi. It's like a Yoshi game. Oh, yeah, okay, <laughs> sure. Yeah, Yoshi's Island. I would totally Woo-hoo. read a, a Yoshi a Yoshi based fantasy series like Night Yoshi's and oh, stuff. Oh, Night Yoshi's, Nintendo. yes. Nintendo, hit me up, yo, Nintendo. I got an idea oh. for this game. It's called Medieval Yoshi. It's gonna be cool. As oh fun. man, you know that that like yarn Yoshi game was so cute. It was so adorable. Um, I, I think what, I know what, what does that even about. call it? I don't even remember. Um, but uh, Yarn Chi. I'm trying to remember. 
shit. Oh, that's right. So I was talking about uh, having to record this today when I was out last night with some friends. Um, I went to dinner with some people before I went to a show. And um, at dinner, uh, my friends Jen and Mary were present, and apparently neither of them ever listened to me speak because they didn't realize that I do this podcast. <laughs> I mean, not that it's, not that I, I mean, I probably just don't talk about it enough for people to pick up on it. Yeah, you're not just spouting out there like, hey, check out my podcast yeah, yeah. about terrible books. Yeah, I'm not like walking around wearing a terrible book club shirt or anything, so... Uh, They were like, wait, what? And so they started just giving me all these recommendations. And I was like, guys, slow down, slow down. Um, I knew that Mary was uh, an avid reader. I didn't know Jen was, though, until last night. Turns out, you know, I had these two people who are just constantly grinding through books. I mean, Jen is reading four books simultaneously right now. Like, they're they're both kind of crazy. Um, that, like all at the same time in one session, that must get confusing. I, uh, well, not obviously. Just not she in has one like session, four but... separate books laid out in front of her, and she like goes to like she reads a page on the top left. No, and page no, on no, the top it's right, not not then... quite like that. Um, but anyway, <laughs> so uh, high level reading. Um, things. Mary recommended a book called Hush Hush, which is apparently Twilight, but with angels. And I was like, well, we kind of already did a Twilight knockoff, but I'll put it on the list. She she said it was so bad she couldn't finish it, which okay. which is kind of incredible. Um, because Mary has sort of a she she's like a theater person and she you know she likes a lot of like silly stuff. So if she couldn't finish it, then that that's an indicator to me. Um, and Jen recently picked up a book called Dracu Twig, which is what excuse which me? is about Twiggy the model being a vampire. Oh man, I thought it was gonna be like a vampire stick. That, oh fuck that! I don't <laughs> like a vampire that. tree. Yeah, that would have been yeah, kind of like better. It, imagine, look, Paris. Imagine being a vampire, but you can't fucking move. Uh-huh. Like, how hard would that be? That's a real interesting story. Yeah, because like, you, you would die. You, unless you need you're really cool. to feed off of other things, but you can't fucking move. Yeah. Which really sucks when you're a vampire, especially if you can't be out in the... Actually, now that you're talking about it, how would a vampire tree work? Because trees need sunlight to live, right? Yeah, so it would have... So, if you're a vampire tree, do you need moon to live? Well, they would, it would have to be a vampire um, mushroom, perhaps? Some kind of fungi? Uh, is that what the vampire tree turns into? Maybe. Maybe it's, it's just vampire a big fungi. fungi. Is that what mushrooms really are, Paris? Mushrooms Has it been vampires? that way this whole time? Mushrooms are really just vamp tree, <laughs> tree vampires. <laughs> so, pretty, I need to look this pretty up. Sure, mushrooms are not vampires. Um, Don't they live off the side of trees most of the time? Not most of the time. There are some some species of fungi that live. All right, you heard it here oh first. This is my uh, theory: mushrooms are tree vampires. <laughs> I mean, plenty of things are become... vampiric in the sense that you know they have a. Um, I fucking can't think anymore. Um, I'm thinking about, a, uh... <laughs> thinking about Dracula now. I'm thinking about Dracula in like a with like two broken legs now. And he's just like, oh fuck! I need the blood no, really starts, bad. No, but it... if he starts growing roots, he's fine. Like he can't move, yeah, but he can so, grow roots. So. so like, yeah, he's like on Craigslist, like trying to convince someone to come over to his castle. It's like a uh, uh, free. Uh, what do you, what are the peasants like nowadays? Bread. They love uh, bread, right? Free bread. Bread. Free bread. To come to the castle in Transylvania free for bread. your free bread and drippings. Uh, uh, come in the back door. Don't tell anyone you came. Uh, just bring it up to uh, come to my room and lean over uh, to my ear and tell whisper to me who you are, and I will give you the bread. What kind of bread you uh, would like? Yeah, uh, yeah. Whisper <laughs> in my ear what kind of bread you would like. And I will wake up and deliver it to you. Uh, signed, Dracu... Uh, I mean, a person. Signed, Dracu Baker. Bakula. Yeah. Signed, Bakula. <laughs> um, <laughs> yes. But, um... Oh, you know what? Do you remember any of the titles of the books that you have in the pile? Oh, yeah. Uh, so I did, like, this music video shoot, which, uh... I think you, yeah, I think you talked about it before. I did, and uh, so there was like a, yeah a bunch of books that I selected from the pile as the the terrible pile. Um, there's a chakra crystals like little booklet over there. There's a John Edwards crossing over. Oh book man, over we gotta read that. There's something with uh, there seems to be like a fantasy based romance novel. There's a shirtless guy on it with a sword. Yeah, we're gonna. And I think we should I, skip some of the. We've been reading too much fantasy stuff. We gotta mix it up. I think the John Edwards thing is is a good one. 
Um, there was a couple other ones that I are kind of escaping me right now, but uh, maybe this is the appropriate place to talk about our uh, Patreon, uh, Patreon. Patreon Pat, yes, we have a Patreon. Patreon. Give us some, Pat-tary-on. give us some money, and we'll uh, read what you want. Um, like we did for this episode, we also owe Dari a a, a scene reading here. Yeah, which, which is we're not going to do in this episode because that will be locked behind a paywall. Uh, <laughs> the, yeah, a paywall because uh, I, we still need to clarify exactly which of the scenes yeah, that she wanted us I'm, to do. I'm honestly it, a little terrified about it now. Yeah, uh, but it you might know, be a little whatever. Comfy. We we might figure a way around it. So maybe Dari, you'll get a message from us asking for clarification on that, or we'll deliver something to you. Don't worry. Yeah, we're, we're um, going to honor our our pledge there. So so yeah, it, actually, the Patreon. Um, if you I think if you give us four dollars, you can watch us. Um, you or you can listen to us and watch listen to our commentary on and watch the Maradonia movie, um, which I think is definitely worth four dollars. Uh, that was a yeah, really fun time. We're gonna start doing some more content like that probably over the next month. I'm hoping that I can convince Paris to come over to my place and we can record. I have a couple of ideas in the back pocket for like video commentary things to watch. Yeah, Maybe yeah. another movie. Maybe a couple episodes of some low budget fantasy series. Maybe some book trailers. We'll yeah, that, no, that's yeah, definitely. And now, well, it, luckily now I'm I'm back. Uh, oper- I'm operational at a in a remote sense now because I just got this um this interface today. Uh, hopefully, hopefully all of us exports we okay. Just, we could also just both watch the same thing. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Over the internet, um, and that would be the same thing. Yeah, so so we'll have more stuff. But right now, it's just the Maradonia movie. But it's like almost two hours of us commenting. It's over very it. worth it. It's a crowning it's achievement. Really funny. Incredible. <laughs> um, and I really don't think any content we release after that will quite touch. That. Yeah, it was. I mean, I think we both end up actually crying a few times because it's so funny. Um, yeah, it's it's really. Uh, it's worth your four dollars. Yeah, or, I mean, you know, you can also just, like, give us a dollar once. Like, whatever. Anything counts. Like, we're not, you know, we're not yeah. too crazy. It's just, it just helps us with the cost of hosting and buying books. Um, although we try to buy the books for as little as possible, but there's still a cost. And um, hosting is, is the more expensive thing. It's still not crazy, but, you know, it's it's easier if we have some funding at least. And, you know, uh, my margins are thin oh, yeah. in real life, yeah. as I'm sure yours are as a listener here. We're not saying just throw us all the cash, but, you know, a, a dollar here or there helps us to just keep everything running smoothly without having to worry about anything. So we can just keep c- cranking this out without worrying about hosting costs and whatnot. Yeah, um, and like, and so the hope pe- is that, you know, if eventually we get enough donors, we'll actually have enough money to increase our hosting, buy more books and do more episodes every month. So think of it that way, too. Um, I think that's a far off cry in the you distance, have, but you know yeah, you it's, to, it's there. Um, we have to see a clear audience that wants that much content, yeah. and we've definitely been getting hearing more from some folks here and there, so that's wonderful. Yeah, and speaking of speaking but, of communicating with us, um, you can you know we're happy to answer your messages um, on Facebook or on Twitter um, or on our Patreon or even on our Libsyn page, which is where this uh, podcast lives. So feel free to root around on all of those platforms and, um, you know, send us a message, ask us a question, whatever. Uh, we like hearing from you. So please do that. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't think we have any other news. I think that's kind of it. Yep. No, I mean, uh, hopefully for our first patron request book, this was an adequate episode. Uh, you you know, you got what you wanted out of hearing us discuss this book. It was certainly a breath of fresh air in comparison to a lot of the other books we've been reading. But I can see why it was recommended to us as well. Yeah, I think that at the be- like when we were first reading the beginning, we were like, "Hmm, I wonder why this person thought this was so bad." And then after we finished it, yeah. we were like, "Oh, we yeah, get it now." Yeah, <laughs> once again, the plague really messed everything yeah, up for everybody. Yeah. Um, but yeah, if uh, and you know, Dari, if there's anything that we failed to cover or, or that you want to hear our opinions about, let us know, um, and we can you know we can maybe put up a short uh, short audio or video or something of us discussing whatever those things. I would be. also. I would also like to have another patron so that we stop directly addressing one person in all of these episodes. <laughs> I know. It sounds like we're like... Which must feel weird. It sounds like we're like... It must feel really weird. Yeah, it sounds like we're fucking schizophrenic or something, or I don't know, we have some, some mental condition where we just think that there's this person out there named Dari that we I have to I swear they're listening. To. They're listening, Paris. Just, we, I promise you, we have listeners. Yeah, like, we just, want us to we read just these made this books. person up. Like, Dari, you're not even real. Get out of here. You're... It's our coping mechanism for, like, no, they want us to read the books. We have to <laughs> yeah, do it. Yeah, we have to. We have to do it. 
Oh man! All right. Well, All I right. guess uh, I guess that is it for Dragon Prince by Melanie Ron. Uh, thanks for listening, and uh, have a great weekend. Uh, Actually, have a great dra- um, Yostre Easter whatever. Enjoy it. Uh, Dragonberry beret. What? Yeah, that's not even the right melody. What for the that hell song. are you even saying right now? <laughs> Did uh, you just have a stroke? Like what just happened? Red. Little red sun runner. I da, da, I don't da, know da, what's happening. Does, uh, if anyone knows what prin- is happening to Chris right now, please assist him. They're all Prince songs, Paris. <sighs> They're all Prince songs about dragons. Oh, okay, all right. Well, anyway, <laughs> on that my s- jokes just don't work on you. I really I, don't think. I know like, it's like it's like I have a wall around me to protect me <laughs> from yeah, them. A com- you're a comedy. You're a comedy wall that I keep throwing things <laughs> against, and they just keep bouncing back and hitting me in the face every single time. Yeah. Well. All right, Paris. <laughs> on that note, haha, because music, haha, I'm so fun. Anyway, uh. We'll catch you on the next episode of Terrible Book Club where I'm making even more terrible jokes. Terrible Joke Club with Chris and Paris. Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. Good night. Bye.